What is going on you guys? How are you all doing today? I hope you guys are doing fantastic as always. Today I wanted to address probably the second most frequently asked question that I get regarding BMW 335i's and that is what model year should I buy? What model year should I look out for? This is a question that I've been asked countless times. I mean literally almost everybody has asked me this at one point. So without further ado, let's not waste any more time and let's get right into it. So for those of you that are just tuning in to this channel or are brand new to the channel, welcome. This is Simply Car Things. Please be sure to give me a thumbs up on this video as well as subscribe to the YouTube channel if you are new here. This is my 2007 BMW 335i. It has the N54 engine. It's got some mods on it. It's tuned, downpipes, it's lowered, it's got wheels. Just the basic stuff. Finally got her all cleaned up actually just the other day. Now a lot of you guys are going to know that this is a 2007 and with BMW on the E90, E92 generation, 2007 was the first year for the BMW 335i coupes. Now a lot of you guys have asked me time over time and are probably thinking in your head, why would you get a 2007? That's the first year, they have the most issues, isn't that the worst build quality? Let's hop in the car, let's go for a quick drive and I'm going to address basically all those things for you guys. actually discussing what are the best model years that you can purchase for a BMW 335i, it's highly important to consider what exactly you are seeking when it comes to purchasing a car on either the N54 or N55 platform. Now, like I stated previously, I get asked a bunch in the comment section on Instagram, on Facebook, what are the best years to buy? Well, first let's break it down and make it as simple as possible for you guys. From 2007 to 2010, the BMW 335i was produced with the N54 engine. That motor is a twin turbo inline six motor. It has been known in the tuner community to be like the modern 2JZ. It can make a lot of power on its stock internals uh, and it has a lot of benefits as far as power is concerned. However, all that power kind of comes with a trade-off and that is reliability. The N54s have had a lot of known issues, high pressure fuel pump, injectors, turbo wastegates, etc., etc. Following the production of the N54, starting in the years 2010 being produced for the model year of 2011, BMW implemented the N55 motor, which is the successor to the N54. The N55 uses a single twin scroll turbo engine, it makes around the same power stock, 300 horsepower, 300 torque that the N54 did, and largely it's a good motor as well. It can produce a sufficient amount of power, you know, for performance driving and tuning, but it has been criticized highly as it is not as tuner friendly or power capable as the N54 motor. Now this is largely where the debate kind of sits. So if you're really looking to purchase a 335i and you want a platform that's really going to be uh, power friendly, if you want to build five, 600, seven, even 800 horsepower with you know mods and bolt-ons and whatnot and to be able to run that power consistently without worrying about damaging your engine, the N54 is probably the way to go just because of how much power it can make and how easily it can make that power. The world record, I believe, for stock turbos on an N54 is around 503 at the wheels. So, horsepower I'm talking about, of course. And these things produce a buttload of torque as well. To achieve around 500 horsepower at the wheels on an N55, you need to do things like go full bolt-on, upgrade the turbos, uh, and you know run advanced tuning and fueling and whatnot so it's definitely uh, a bit of a trade-off uh, as far as power is concerned now with that being said uh, in the coming years and in the past couple of years as well tuners have really been able to advance a lot of the stuff on the n55 platform they've been able to crack you know 600 horsepower to the wheels uh, and continue pushing the boundaries of the motor itself 
uh, but they're still, you know, they haven't really gotten close to that potential that the N54 has produced. I think N54 records are around like 940 at the wheels or something like that, uh, if you want to go crazy powered. With all that being said, the N55 is a bit more reliable. It's not really known for having uh, you know, leaky injector issues and wastegates on the turbo failing and whatnot. 2011 to around 2015 would be the best year to buy in terms of strictly reliability because those are the years that the 335s had the N55. Starting in 2012, BMW switched over to the F30 generation and in the F30 335i's they carried over the N55 motor and from every F30 enthusiast that I've talked with personally and what I've read on the forums and stuff, F30s tend to hold their reliability pretty well from what I've seen. 2007 to 2010 is probably the best year for strictly performance with the N54. Uh, you know, as far as butt dyno feels, the N54 definitely feels quicker compared to an N55 powered car. And that's mainly due to the way that the power delivery uh, is built with the twin turbo setup on the inline six. Now, within these years, like 2007 to 2010, is there a more reliable N54? Like you would think maybe a 2010 would be more reliable than a 2007. Honestly, no. The answer is probably going to be no. For the most part, they all share the same components, the same parts. Uh, there weren't that many like revisions and whatnot. So, you know, yeah, maybe a 2010 might have a chance that it'll have like index 12 injectors uh, versus like an earlier build date model. But for the most part, you have the same engine design, the same overall parts, and likely you're gonna have the same reliability. Now, I'm not going and saying that the N54 is unreliable, but they do have their issues, and it's important to understand that these cars, you know, do come with their own set of issues that uh, will need to be taken care of most likely throughout the duration of owning the car. And same goes for the N55, you know, 2011 to 2015, for the most part, they're kind of all the same. Uh, reliability is kind of one of those things that, you know, this is the same motor, it's the same car overall. It just depends on what you want, what you prefer. If you want a coupe, if you want a sedan, if you want an F30 sedan, if you want an F32, 435, more of those variations that uh, come into play, I guess. If it were me personally, what would be my optimal setup? I would try to go for a 2012 or 2013 uh, BMW 335 IS. Now the IS, if you've watched my video on why I believe the IS is the best sports car you can get for around like 20,000 bucks, the ISs came with the N54 even though they were produced from 2011 to 2013. And the IS has the DCT transmission straight out of the M3. If you opt for that gearbox, you can get it in a six-speed manual. Much stronger and more sufficient cooling systems from the factory for the transmission, for the differential, for the engine. They have an overboost feature, they have built-in launch control, and for the most part, they are amazing performance cars. One day, my goal is to go back and buy a BMW 335 IS that I can build into a performance machine. So, in my opinion, that's like the optimal model to get, uh, but that's just me. If you're looking for like just strictly daily driver type stuff, an N55 is going to be more than enough. An N54 is also pretty good as well if you can keep up with the maintenance. Fortunately, there's a lot of things that you can do to actually cope with it. BMW Fanatic, for example, has a lot of DIYs. Um, there's a great community and platform that is dedicated to helping each other and diagnosing issues. Uh, parts, you know, you can source them through FCP Euro at wholesale cost and you can get a lifetime warranty on all of them. So nowadays there's a lot of workarounds and it actually makes the N54 platform seem uh, much more friendly to the average enthusiast, I guess you could say. So I hope that kind of solves a lot of your guys' questions about what years and which model specifically to get. If you did enjoy this, if you found it helpful, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up on this video, as well as subscribe if you are new here to the channel. Welcome, thank you for watching again. And with all that being said, you guys, stay tuned for the next video. I'll catch you all in the next one. Later.